Hello everyone, just a midweek video to talk about split toning. So what is it and why would you use it? On Sunday I did a video about seascapes and if you watched it you might remember this image and I mentioned at the time that the conditions weren't great, the weather was a bit grey and dull, overcast, too much cloud and I didn't quite get the images that I wanted. But in Lightroom I enhanced the image a little bit using split toning. So what is split toning? Basically, it's a technique to manipulate colour in your photography. So this has been done all the way back into film photography. In those days, they used to use a chemical process when they were developing film. But you can do it digitally nowadays in most editing software. I'm using Lightroom. And you can manipulate some settings to basically put colour into your highlights and shadow areas of your image. So I'm going to show you in this example here in Lightroom. This is just a image I made in Photoshop of some gradients going from full black to full white and all the greys in between. And if I go down to my split tone panel on the right here in Lightroom, um, if I can find it, I've gone past it, there we go. So split toning, you've got five parameters. So you have a hue and saturation for the highlights, you've got a balance, and you've got hue and saturation for your shadows. So if I just turn up the saturation first on the highlights, you'll see that starts adding red into the highlight areas. So wherever it was white or gradients of white, it'll start adding red into those areas. And that's because I've got my hue set to this kind of pinky red. If I change the hue slider, that'll go through the different colors, like greens and blues, etc. And then the same will happen for the shadows. If I put the saturation up, the shadow areas will start becoming red and I can change the hue. So if I put that, the shadows say on like a, a blue, and I'll put my highlights on, I don't know, a pink, you'll see that we've got this gradient where the, where the greys were going from the shadow areas of blue to the highlight areas of pink. And then the balance slider will just determine how much of each you've got, so it'll it'll prioritise either shadow or highlights. And that's basically all split toning is doing in your image. It's looking for areas that are dark or shadows or highlights, and it's applying the hue settings and the saturation settings that you've set to those areas. So when and why would you want to use split toning? Well, the first question you need to ask yourself is, do I need to use split toning? Could you achieve the same results using a different technique that might be simpler? So for example, in this image, I showed this one in a previous video as well, uh, in which I gave my raw files to people to edit. And one of the users who edited my image, he made it really autumnal looking, really kind of orange and golden. Um, so if I was trying to achieve that look without split toning, I'd probably start with the temperature in white balance settings up here. In, under the basic settings, you've got the temperature slider. And if I move that to the right, that just moves the temperature of the image towards the warmer end of the scale. So if I went the other way, it's going to look much cooler. But that's not really getting to where I want to be. It's not, I can't achieve the results that I want with that. So after that, I might try the hue, saturation, luminance settings. And I've already changed these a little bit, but I might want to change the saturation of the yellow, for example, or the orange. But again, that's not really giving me the results I want. So I might turn to split tone in there just to give me the results I want. And we'll come to that in a moment. So other situations, and I mean, that that's an example where you might just want to slightly enhance an image to give it the look or feeling that you had in your head when you were taking the shot, but you couldn't quite capture with the basic camera settings. Um, another reason why you might want to use split toning is to give a cohesive feel to a series of images. So you can apply your split toning settings to one of the images and then even if you've got other images which are taken at different times or different camera settings, different exposures, you can copy and paste your split toning uh, settings to each of those other images and it'll apply a look and a feel to those other images, which just gives the whole series a more cohesive look. And another reason you might want to use split toning is just to 
create a, a more dramatic effect. So more like a special effect, I guess, if you like. And that's similar to what I did with my Seascape photo uh, last week. Uh, it was just a bit, it was looking a bit dull with the, the grey flat light in it on the day. So I just needed to lift that image somehow and split toning really helped with that and created an image that was okay in the end. Um, and there are other photographers who use uh, split toning in their work. Um, Liam Wong comes to mind. He does a lot of uh, city shots in, uh, in Asian cities, I think like Tokyo and places where there's lots of neon lights. And uh, I'm pretty sure he uses split tone anyway, it looks like it. He's, and, and all these images look like uh, they're from uh, the film Blade Runner. They're quite dark and you've got these like really glowing like pinks and blues and yellow lights. They're really great. So if, you, if you're into that kind of like sci-fi look, go check those out. And um, I think Albert Dross, he's a landscape photographer. Um, I'm pretty sure he uses quite a bit of split toning in his work. So go check him out. I'll put links below uh, in the description. So we'll just uh, go through this image then, um, just showing how I might just do some basic enhancements to, to make this more autumnal looking, if that's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to put the saturation up of the highlights. Just go to about there. It doesn't really matter to start with what colour you've got. Just put your saturation up so you can start to see what the effect's doing. And then move your hue slider until you get to a hue that that you want basically. So I'm wanting a, a kind of a yellow colour. So I'll go to about there. And then leave the balance for now. And then do the saturation for your shadows. So I'm going to go for a kind of a reddy colour but I don't want it too saturated that I want it quite subtle. So that, that's the key with split toning. Depending on how strong you want the effect to be you will control that through your saturation sliders. So if you want a more subtle effect, don't use too much saturation. If you want a really strong effect, obviously, you know, bump up the saturation sliders. So I've got my highlights and my shadows. Uh, I'm just gonna change the, the hue of my shadows a bit. In fact, it was, it was probably all right around about where it was, because I want it quite reddish, so there we go. And then I'm gonna change the balance just to find where I want it really, so it's, it's, that's too much. And I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna keep it fairly in the middle, but maybe just down a tiny bit. And that's much more where I wanted it. And I couldn't achieve that using the white balance or the colors. Um, I really had to go into split toning to get that. So let's take a look now at that seascape that I was talking about. I've done some edits in Lightroom to my exposure, shadows, you know, presence. So a few basic colour settings, but as you can see, it's looking a bit dull, and that's what I was really disappointed with on the day. It's just, it did, I mean, we were going into blue hour at this time. There, there wasn't any interest in the sky um, earlier on as the sun was going down, um, and then as we got to blue hour, the clouds opened up, and uh, so I managed to get this with a bit of kind of the last bit of light in the sun in the sky going down there. But by this time it was just, yeah, blue hour, getting dark, and the rest of the, the the photo looks a bit flat. So if we go down to our split toning settings, what I'm going to do, I want it to look really purple. That, if you remember the, the image that I showed you at the beginning of the video, it had this really kind of dramatic, purpley look to it. And the reason I want it to look like that is because it doesn't, you can't see it here, but when I, I was actually there, there was this kind of like purple tint in the sky. I think you could see it earlier on in the video from Sunday, it was looking purple uh, in the sky, but later on into blue hour, when I took the actual photo, you couldn't see that. So I want to just bring that out using split toning. So I'm going to put my saturation up a bit, change my hue and find a pinky kind of look. So probably about 340 and I think that that's too much saturation there so I'm going to bring that down to about there and then my shadows I want though like I said I want it to be quite purpley so I find a purpley hue 
Um, should have brought my saturation up first so I can see what I'm doing. About 250. And then, again, it's too, too saturated that, so it just really is too much. So I'm going to bring that down about 25. And then finally, all I need to do then is adjust my balance until it's in a nice place really. So I had it about 18, I think. And if I just turn that on and off, you can see it just really just gives that a lift. It wasn't perfect on the day, but giving it that extra bit of split toning just really just adds a, just a little extra dimension to the image and just gives it a bit more interest in the end. And the best thing to do is just experiment, you know, go down to the split turning panel, play around with the sliders, see what looks good. If it does, then great, go with it. So just a quick one really, split turning, when, why, how you'd use it. I hope you found it useful, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you didn't, uh, please give it a like. And uh, yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye for now.